And this headline sums the disaster up perfectly. Quote, I never could work out what the hell crypto is. Now a weird outfit run by an insufferable kid in a hoodie has lost billions. And it's proof smart people didn't have a clue either. Here now, the writer, the woman behind those wise words, Maureen Callahan, Daily Mail columnist. Maureen, I've been reading your columns and, uh, well, your book uh, for a very long time. What do you make of this with so many powerful, smart people getting sucked in by this alleged con artist? You know, to me, the, the most uh, illuminating thing we've seen thus far is that Vox interview that your reporter just mm -hmm. referenced, where this so-called genius, you know, who convinced some of the biggest minds in the world that if they didn't understand it, it was because they just couldn't grasp it, is now saying that life just creeps up on you and, you know, stuff happens. And this is how he lost so many billions of dollars, but actually he didn't lose it. His ex-girlfriend lost it. I mean, try to follow this thread. It's <laughs> fascinating. And I think the story is just going to get better and better. It, it, well, that gets to, and he admits, and he admits that it was horse manure that he was peddling to people and telling people, and you can call them liberal or people on the left or celebrities or Silicon Valley investors and venture capitalists, you know, effective altruism. I need to earn billions to give it all away. That is just classic con artist claptrap. And he kind of admits in this Vox interview that I was just making up garbage. Oh, my favorite part of the Vox interview, and there, there are many, many greatest hits in there, but my favorite part was when he said, yeah, I pretended to have ethics. You know, it looks good. People like the way it sounds when you say you're moral. But, you know, basically he's a psychopath. Um, and I'm sure he's pretty confident that he will skate, given how connected his family is. But um, someone's going to have to be made an example of here. And he's done himself no favors by revealing the true dark heart within. And, and you talk about the fear of missing out. And this is and this is even with the world's most famous celebrities. And certainly money played a part obviously, with Tom Brady and his wife, Giselle Bündchen, doing commercials. They're named as part of this class action lawsuit. But it's and, and they ha are said to have gotten equity stakes in FTX, which are, vert well, they're completely worthless at this point. But it's amazing how once, and he's so brazen that Walter Curran, the famous screenwriter and writer, said this is actually how con artists operate. He wrote a book about Clark Rockefeller, and he said that they're, they are brazen, and they court famous people and politicians because they because they believe they have one over on you. But even with, say, you write about the investors at Sequoia, celebrities, all of these talking heads on TV, it's, it, it looks vaguely like the Elizabeth Holmes Theranos fraud. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's why the story is just going to get more and more compelling. I mean, the thing that really struck me was, so if you, Sequoia ran a profile of this guy quite a while ago. They've since shockingly taken it down. Um, but, you know, they're, they're talking in there about how he's on the phone, on a Zoom, sorry, trying to convince these investors, these VCs, to give him, you know, millions and billions of dollars, and he's, he, his, his way is the way of the future, blah, blah, blah. Oh, and by the way, he's also video gaming while on this Zoom. And, you know, the hoodie, the whole slacker ethos, you know, whatever. And they're <laughs> commenting to each other on the side going, my mind is blown. This guy's a 10 out of 10. I'm all in, you know. And the, the other thing that's just so nefarious, and, and celebrities should really think twice before they endorse guys like this. They get in on Silicon Valley stuff that's really somewhat incomprehensible. Mm -hmm. You know, they're there to appeal to the little guy. They're there to appeal to the guy who maybe has an extra grand in his bank account and is thinking, how can I invest this? Oh, Tom Brady says I should put it in this guy. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. You know, it's really, really unconscionable. And it's Tom Brady and Giselle Bündchen and Steph Curry and Larry David, I believe, are all named in this uh, class action lawsuit. And David Boies is participating in some way, based on what um, I've read. 
and heard in this lawsuit and they should be worried. Like they could just say, well, I just got paid to do the, the ads, but they did have, you know, with Brady and Bunchen, to name two of them, had equity stakes that they got as part of this based on reporting. And they could be, you know, in a lot more trouble than you might think. But one of the things, like everybody's upset about regulation and the regulators and now Congress is getting involved like they're going to do anything about it other than hold hearings. But people play or played in the crypto world because the government was not part of it. It wasn't regulated. They wanted the government out of their money. That was a large part of the allure. And so this is, you know, it is caveat emptor. This is kind of what you get. Yeah, it is. And I think, you know, I'll be shocked if we see any real regulations as a result of this. You know, Silicon Valley has masterfully for years just thrown money and at lobbyists and they get their way. Sometimes Mark Zuckerberg shows up to Capitol Hill when he's summoned. Sometimes he doesn't. You know, this is the mentality that we're dealing with. You know, these are sort of our true overlords. And it really is up to us to sort of be our own best watchmen. Right. Well, it's like I want the government out of my mind. Money. And I want to gamble on digital beanie babies. Well, this is what can happen. That's you know. Yeah, this it's is, not this like you happened. can go to the bank. Right. Yeah, this is this is what what this is. Well, this is the 1920s. This is what what you, in the 20s it was unregulated banks and brokers. Everything cr everything was crooked. There was front running. People would start a rumor and take down a bank. Well, they didn't want regulation in government get, you know, I want free money, you know, my yeah. money free of uh, borders. Well, this is what happens. Maureen, before you go, I want to tell everybody mm -hmm. about your book, American Predator, that you wrote about the serial killer, Israel Keys. I read that I read almost completely nonfiction, and I read a lot of cr true crime books. This is one of the best books I've ever read, and I want to tell people to read it, well, buy it, and then read it. And don't listen Thank to you it. so much. And don't listen to it on Audible. It's better if you read it. It just <laughs> sucks you in. And I don't know how uh, you reported it. I really don't. It's so detailed. And I just encourage people to read it. So I'll leave them with that. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you for being here, Maureen Callahan. I'll see you soon. Thanks for having me.